Hello. Hello, darling heart. It's good to see you. It's good to see you and it's good to be seen. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was realizing, like, I just wasn't sure if we were meeting, mm. having, like, the not really heard back from you on the text. So I was like, I put it oh. on my calendar and now I'm, like, assuming that I, that we're on the same page. I didn't realize I didn't text you back. Apologies for that. Wow. All yeah. All good. All good. I was just owning on my end, like, you know, put it on the calendar and acted as if and was like, I didn't really follow up and now it's 5 30 so. it's five <laughs> is she gonna be on that other camera <laughs> and like hmm i dropped my, the ball in my own way of of the assumption right yeah so yeah all yeah. good yeah all good all how good are here. you we got a little I'm, early earlier i know i kind of like this a I little earlier you know because it's still bright i mean Relatively sleeping, you know, speaking, it's actually really gray here. Because yeah. we got, I don't even know how much snow we got, but just like estimating, I would say a good five inches, maybe six inches. Wow. And we're supposed to get more, like it stopped for now, but I think we're supposed to get more overnight. Yeah, I think we got about three and there's like three or four more coming here. So similar. I'm done. <sighs> I know you've already got your tan on. You're all glowy. You're at the beach, looks like, or in the hills. Yeah, you're like, I. this is my overwinter. I'm overwinter. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I got this. Um, it's a product from a company called New Skin, N-U Skin, mm -hmm. New Skin. Mm -hmm. And it's a self-tanner. And I have to tell you, <laughs> The last time I used a self tanner was probably high school. Right. And I turned orange. <laughs> and is the self tanner just so that I'm clear? Is it like a, a t like it's got the tone in it, and it just you put it on, and that's the tone you are? Or like, do you start kind of bronzing from the inside once you put it on? So the stuff that I used forty years ago, literally. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> um, it, it's, it comes out of the bottle white. Okay. And you put it on and then you watch yourself kind of transform. And you're like, oh my God, what's going on? It's a little weird. <laughs> like minute by minute. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it, I mean, until like you're completely orange, it's probably a couple hours. Oh my gosh. And then it has to be put on really evenly and smoothly or else you'll have all these streaks it's very temperamental let me say that okay <laughs> <laughs> and i can't even believe i'm saying that about self tanning lotion but i am because it's really true yeah so anyway <laughs> my um anyway this woman that i got, ho got hooked up with she sells this she does literally probably 90% of her business on Facebook. Wow. Right yes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. So anyway, so, um, and what she does is she has her clients market for her. She'll send them the script and photos of, of what, you know, the before and after or some in skin of the different products. <clears throat> so anyway, literally for 40 years, I have, I'm too afraid of sunscreen. <laughs> Well, when you say orange and streaks, it's like, yeah, no, no thanks. No, thank you. Yeah. So anyway, my younger sister has been hooked up with this woman for a while and she did one of her marketing things. And I was like, oh, let me. So I actually, I private messaged my sister and I just said, does it really work? She's like, if you have had the same issues that I've had, and we probably have with self tanner, you would really like this. I'm like, okay. So anyway. It comes out of the tube brown. Right. And it's a gel. And you literally put it on like you would liquid makeup. And you know where you're putting it on because you you're getting it. You know exactly scent. where you're putting it on. And there's no streak issues or anything like that. It has very low odor. And so <clears throat> um, I put a little bit on yesterday and then I put a little bit more on today. 
So you, you know, you can or can't, whatever you want to do, you know, to kind of deepen tan. So this is two days. Right? Well, and that was my curiosity was like, is it just literally topical and that's the tan or is it doing something beneath the skin? It's topical. Yeah. So if I wanted to really wash, like deeply wash my face with, with a, you know, a, a wash cause I like, I really do like to wash my face. Like a lot of people don't use washcloths. I'm one of those people you use as a washcloth cause I really like the way it feels the, 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 the fibers feel on my face. And so it, it would literally wash away. Like I could gotcha. literally wipe it away. So it's not, there's no permanency to it. It's really lovely. Um, so anyway, thank you. Cause I'm like, yeah. gosh, how am I going to look on camera? <laughs> It's, it's lovely because it's that golden glow and it doesn't look, it doesn't look temperamental. <laughs> it looks really natural and really radiant. And um, yeah, nice. I love that you're like rocking the golden glow in the dead of winter. It's like, I feel like your rebellious spirit. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh, that's I, hilarious. I am defying the gods. I will be bronze. I am. <laughs> Darn it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to own my skin color. Woo! <laughs> but I'm going to change it if I want to. Right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, because I've talked to you, we've been on here, and I've just sort of said out loud, I am so pale. Like, I think I've said that out loud, right? Yes. And I'm like, oh my, I am so pale. Like, I look like, I look like the white background of my screen. It's off. I mean, <laughs> and you know who Anderson Cooper is? Of course. Yeah. Like he is a, <laughs> he's ghostly pale, right? And he totally laughs at himself about it, but he talks about it quite, quite often. I'm like, God, do I look like Anderson? <laughs> And I adore him. Like I do love, I just adore him. <laughs> oh my gosh. So how are you and how is your world and your life? And oh my it's gosh. Been, it feels like it's been, it's only been, it's been an additional day, but it feels like three weeks or something. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think our, I, I can speak for me. My days feel fuller and richer. And so it's always hard to be like, wow, all that was packed into a week, you know? Um. Yeah, I've been feeling really, I don't know if touched is the right word, but just noticing my world, you know, I'm doing a lot more like fierce working out and it's doing something for my spirit and my mental health, my emotional health. Um, And last week I had what I would call discovery calls, you know, like with people who might want to be a client. Mm -hmm. I had three of them and was really touched that like everyone was like yeah I want to work with you so there was just this feeling of uh, alignment on the inside because you know and I think you know like I've I've been moving out of finance right and when I had this dream of like man I, I can't bear to do finance for another four decades or whatever um, what is it that I love it's like I love connecting I love people I am such a relational human that I I went through coaching training but up until this point it's been kind of this hopeful dream right with work and hustle put in and to kind of start to see the goals I had set a year ago kind of like showing up manifesting maybe even more than what I've set out to do and being like I think the touched part is like wow like this is the dream I was dreaming last New Year's, not this past one, but the one before. And then just sort of recognizing the amount of people, support, um, my own, you know, self-belief that went into like things starting to come together as it relates to the amount of people I want to serve, as it relates to really like uninstalling QuickBooks and leaving the finance world behind. Like it's all quite imminent now. And so I, I'm just feeling like a, a quiet, joyful, like celebration inside. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Because it's not, I think, 
the piece I'm holding is like, it's not guaranteed. And yet the left foot, right foot trust walk of moving towards a dream and now seeing it start to really come into frame. It, it's like, I, I kind of want to shout that from the rooftops, you know, like follow your heart as trite as that sounds like follow your bliss as cliche as that, you know, that, saying has gotten to be like there is some real truth uh -huh. in in being in alignment with yourself um and for me you know what i got today was as i walk with my hopes and dreams like i have a joyful heart i have an inspired spirit i have like empowerment and confidence and i have um I don't know, like an aliveness that just wasn't there before. And aliveness is very important to me. You know, it's, it's like the, it's the thing mm -hmm. for me to feel my aliveness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a part of me, you know, I, I, I want to say it's about damn time. You know what I mean? Because I feel like as humans, we're kind of, you know, that that rock song from the 80s, I think, living for the weekend or something like that. Right. I don't want to live for the freaking weekend. I want to live for my life. Mm -hmm. I want to live and work and, and that. right. And oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. And um Well, and I guess, you know, what, what I have at times attempted to wrap my head around is when I hear people say, oh, I'm working 65, 75, 80 hours a week. And I'm like, what? Like, why would you do that? <laughs> I mean, unless it's something you are passionate about and right. you love and you can't wait to get to work. At, but still, that sounds a little, you know, right. a little much for me personally. But, but you know. Um, I've never understood that mentality, mm -hmm. you know, working for the weekend, working for the paycheck. What about loving and owning and feeling passionate about what you do? Then it doesn't feel like you're working. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When I think of like when I was 23, 24, you know, working in the entertainment business, but in essentially in a corporate environment and really feeling depressed, really, you know, in, in what I consider the gap, right. Of like, here's who I am, here's who I'm being. And like somewhere in there's depression and addiction, uh -huh. right. Cause I'm not in alignment. And I don't think I could articulate it at the time that what I was doing was what society had told me to do. Right. It took getting up the rungs of that ladder to like, you know, the place where you're like, oh, this is where it's supposed to feel good to be like, this is it. Oh, I've been walking up the wrong ladder. Yeah. Right. And that's that I think happens to a lot of people. Yeah. I'm going to say hopefully, <laughs> because I don't know if it really does, but to finally get to that echelon to that that promised place and then be like this doesn't feel like what I thought it would feel yeah. like so kind of like now what yeah yeah have you experienced that or I guess been aware of that um <clears throat> so I had a job after college in retail um and this company was based out of California out of Sausalito, California, which is, you know, very close to San Francisco. And um, so anyway, I went through the whole, you know, hiring process. And then for the first two weeks, I think I was traveling to Manhattan to train. So they had stores all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I was going to their Manhattan store, actually their Soho store for two weeks. <clears throat> and um, and that was grueling just because I would get on the train, get off the train in New York, 
work, you know, whatever, nine hour day, get back on the, I mean, it was just, it was exhausting. And anyway, so then, and then after I trained in Manhattan for two weeks, then I went to California. I went to their Santa Monica store and I was training with another woman from Minneapolis. I think she was from. And um, anyway, so they had spent, I don't even know how many thousands of dollars on our training, right? Mm -hmm. And I come back to Philadelphia and the stores in King of Prussia Mall. And um, I come back and I'm working and the numbers were like, the numbers that they were expecting were not what was happening at the store. And I was feeling so much stress and pressure. And this isn't, and I, I mean, I was in a management position. I wasn't even a supervisor or a corporate. I was in a, in a management position for a store. And I was like, this sucks. Like this <laughs> sucks hardcore, you know? And I, and I kept thinking to myself, how long do I think I can stay in this? Like how, like how much, how sustainable or how, how much do I have in me to feel like I can put up with this bullshit? Like early on, early on. Right. So I think I was there for, I don't even know, was it maybe two months and the supervisor, they had hired the supervisor at the same time they had hired myself and this other woman from Minneapolis and the supervisor came, she was in, and she was, you know, based in Manhattan and we went to lunch and I got fired. And I was like, you know what I did? I was like, thank fucking God. And she just looked at me and I said, you have no idea. I'm like, I'm so glad to not be working here. I think I was looking for an out. So thank you. Wow. And she was so take, she was just like, I wasn't expecting that reaction. I said, that's my reaction. That's how I feel. Here are the keys. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and she's like, you're not finishing the day. I said, hell no, I'm not finishing the day. I'm yeah, out of here. Point, right. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. If that hadn't happened. Like, Oof. where do you think you would have? Um, through? I think I would have maybe made an attempt to stay another two to four weeks max mm -hmm. max because you know it was it was the kind of job where I literally I I it I was thinking about it 24 7 uh. even on even if I had three days off back to back which was so first of all to have two days off back to back was unheard of but there was I did I did have I forget it was a fluke and I did get three days off back to back but even in those three days, I was thinking about work and, and inventory and, and my employees. And Ugh, I mean, it was great. insane. I'm like, no, no, I don't care how much money I'm making. There's nothing worth this kind of stress. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yet you had like your own back because that's not a very long time to be like, okay, I'll, I'll be respectful and give a two week notice, but then I'm really out of here. Yeah. 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 And how are you doing, my love? How is your world since I saw you last? My world has been pretty good. My world has been pretty good. Um, yeah, I feel, you know, um, we met, we got together last week, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, like what, what happened? Um, wow. So just think of what I want to go into or what I don't want to go into. Mm. Um, so I am finding that, huh? So this is, uh, so this is, um, this is some truth telling, um, which, you know, I'm good at. <laughs> ah! So in a meditation, a couple days ago, I, I got this, I got a download 
because it's it's interesting because this is something that's kind of been a little bit in my purview like not mm-hmm. not like screaming at me but just like you know there's some things on the back burner and um and I got a really clear download that um my circle my very tight circle of friends mm-hmm. could be changing mm-hmm. and and I was like at first I was like oh I don't you know I don't know about that I you know um but that only lasted like maybe a minute or two because initially I was because it's one thing for me to have this you know to just sort of having it mull around but then to hear it from spirit I'm like spirit doesn't lie why can't spirit lie to me sometimes you know because sometimes I don't I know that I don't want to hear the truth because it's hard but I really do want to hear the truth. And I was like, oh, really? Okay, 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 okay. And then I just, I sat with it and I let it sink in. And I'm like, yeah, this feels right in my body. Like it just, I didn't have any, I didn't feel out of balance. I felt very much in my body, very grounded. Because when the truth is the truth, you ground in the truth, right? It just, you know that it's the truth. And um, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, So there's a part of me that feels, I don't, I I, like there, I want to, I almost want to say, do I like, do I really feel sad about it? Uh. Mm -hmm. right like do I feel sad about it um no not really you know I mean that's I I really you know because I'm like okay if spirit's going to be as honest with me as as I've asked and it it is um I then also have to step up Mm -hmm. and speak my truth and share my truth um yeah and because if if I lie to myself yeah then I'm you know then I'm lying to everyone else that's how it feels anyway so um and the only person I really heard if I'm lying to myself really is me so um yeah it's been Let me just say it's been an, it's been a fascinating and interesting inner inner mm-hmm. journey, you know that's been kind of going on. Um, and then the other thing that I have um, really found that I'm appreciating more than I thought I would appreciate before is. Um, speaking the same language, hmm. you know, and Tell especially when it comes to, well, especially when it comes to hard topics or topics that we may not agree on. And for a long time, I mean, and it probably will be for many, many years to come. I mean, that can be politics, right? you know, it can be religion. It can be a million different things. And, um, and the one thing that I noticed when the vaccine came, you know, like is being put into people's bodies, um, I was feeling, cause I'm not going to be getting it. Like I've already made that decision that I'm not going to be getting the vet, getting the injection. And, um, and I was like, re- just reading like people going, oh, you know, and celebrating that they're getting the vaccine. And I'm going, oh, like, that scares the crap out of me. Like, I-, I don't know where you are on the whole thing. We haven't had the conversation, but I have some very serious reservations about it. I do. And um, So I have a friend, a very good friend that I, very trustworthy and and knowledgeable friend who 
has shared a lot of information with me. And, um, and so I've read a lot of, um, I've read a lot of actual readable and understandable <laughs> information yeah. about, you know, about the vaccine and, or I'm going to call it the injection because it's, it, there's a whole thing around that term. But um, so I'm feeling less alone because I was feeling a little ostracized. I was doing that to myself. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I was listening and watching all these people going like, high five, I got the vaccine. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not getting it. I feel like I'm totally out of place. I'm not out of place. Yeah. I'm not alone in it. Like I know that I'm not, you know? Um, and I've come to, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that I've had some time to really sit with it and process it and be like really feel solid in my decision. Um, that I don't really, I don't feel that anymore. Like I really don't, like I feel empowered by the knowledge that I, that I, you know, have come across and read. And there was this really incredible webinar that I listened to and I was just like, holy moly, that's just, people need, people who want to know about it need to know about this because not everyone's gonna wanna listen to it and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, and I think I sent it to you. I think I sent oh. you the newsletter because I blind copied, I blind copied probably eight or nine people. You, I think you were one of them. I'll have to and look it in came, my email pile, yeah. And it came in the form an, of a newsletter. So it's from the Children's Health Defense and it's Robert Kennedy's organization, nonprofit. And, um, and then in there is a link that they did a webinar two hour it's like two and two hours and 10 minutes and they have all these different speakers on and not just doctors but lawyers and um and writers and people who've done a lot of research about the injection and also like offshoots of the injection meaning like different conversations about it and then different communities and how they're affected or how they're not getting access to it you know just all of that um, it, it was very, it was very enlightening. And I'm really glad that I listened to, I will, I didn't listen to all of it, but I listened to the majority of it. And I was like, oh, thank God that I have friends who I feel are, is the word, com I feel a camaraderie with where yeah. this is concerned, you know? Um, um, yeah. And then, you know, I, it was interesting because in this one conversation that I had a couple of weeks ago, um, two people are, they've decided they're, they're getting the vaccine and, um, and I, you know, I share that I'm not. And <laughs> my one friend said, well, you know, we can probably still work something out like getting together. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> what? And, and I was like, what does that mean? You know, like, am, 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 do they think that I'm infected because I don't have it? Like I'm not getting the vaccine. So, um, so anyway, I, I contacted my other friend who this was after the the conversation that we had and I contacted another friend of mine who's, who's very knowledgeable about this. And I just said, this just happened. And mm -hmm. um, am, I, am I infected because I'm not getting the vaccine? Mm -hmm. And my friend said, actually, she said, because in the vaccine is the virus, they are, they are definitely more susceptible than you are and more susceptible to being, to infecting than you are because you don't have it in your system. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, all right. Yeah. So there are just a million layers to this whole thing, you know? And um, yeah, just a lot of layers yeah. to all of it. And I'm like, 
I just, I guess what I want to say to the general public, whoever's listening, just res respect everyone's decision. Simply respect everyone's decision, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, like, let's this not have one more thing to divide us. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I hold a, a bit of a, a pro choice approach mm -hmm. here, which is I personally, as a fact finder, there's not enough data. There's not enough long term data on the virus itself or this remedy, so to speak. So I'm not someone who's going to raise my hand up first. And then that would be in a lot of different areas of life. Like I would be the person who wants in-depth research with some longevity behind it before I make a decision like that, that affects my physical body that stores my soul, like feels pretty important to me. Uh -huh. And I think the place that I've seen sort of this wave of judgment, right? There's like, there's like, yeah, the high five, I got the vaccine, which is it's, it's like a bit more celebratory and I don't feel judgment there. Where I hear it is like when people are like, wow, you must be really dumb not to get it. No one said that to me, but I've seen it in, uh -huh. you know, dialogues and social media. And it's like, yeah, we don't need to do that either. Yeah. Right? Like no one's hopefully doing that to each other. No shaming because you're not getting your flu shot. Right. Well, like, <laughs> like, you so would much. hope so. <laughs> well, and I get that this has, again, the layers of like, this is charged. Many people have died. Many people have been stuck at home for a year as yeah. we're coming into that anniversary time. Mm -hmm. um, so I get that people might be operating on certain triggers as well, sure. whether they know it or not. And when people say, oh, I got, you know, I'm scheduled to get my GAT vaccine. I'm like, cool. And if people are like, I'm not getting it, cool. Yeah. Like, or people are like, I'm ambiguous about it, cool. Because you know what? It's a personal decision. And right. I don't shame people if they eat sushi every night. Right. You know, I don't shame them if they get a dog instead of a cat. Like, none of right. that's my business. Right. None of it is anyone's business. And I'm pretty happy not to make other people's business my business. Me too. It's Me great. Too. Me too. I don't, I honestly don't even want to know. I really don't even want to know. I love you. Cause it's like, my life is good. Cause your business is your business. It's your business. My life yeah. is grand because mm -hmm. I don't put my nose in your business. Mm -hmm. Like try it sometime. <laughs> Oh my God, that is, we need to, we need to put that in a meme or a quote. That's right? hilarious. Yes. Try it's it just, just try it. It's, it's a lovely, yeah. liberating, quite soul led life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm way more interested in what my soul has to say. Yeah. And I always have been, frankly, I've, I've yeah. gone astray certain decades. Yeah. And caring what other people thought. But I am, I have a strong conviction now, like soul led focus. Yeah. The rest for me is static. Uh mm huh. -hmm. It's just, it's literally like that noise of static. Yeah. Yeah. I really hear that. I get that. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and like putting levity into it. Cause every time someone brings up that topic, there's like a little part of me, like my sphincter gets a little tight. It's like, oh. I know. Where I is know. this going to go? And, you right. know, and yeah. then it's like, oh, wait, like you do you, I'll do and me. And I'll do me. Yeah. And let's respect that we have different values. Yeah. And I'm fairly certain because I've seen it in politics and religion and even relationships. Me trying to enlist you in my values. It's not going to be a fun day. It's just not. <laughs> it's not. It's so true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, me wanting to be seen in my values is different, but trying to enlist you in sharing my values, that's yeah. just, yeah, it's exhausting. It's exhausting and it's a waste of time. Yeah. And maybe yeah. we just see each other and like, Hey, this, this friend of mine feels safe for getting the vaccine. They feel supported by it, liberated by it. Okay. 
I yeah. can sh- I can step into those shoes for a minute. And kind of for everything, right? Like there's a, what do I know if I was them, if I had their history and their psychology and their nervous system and and how they're thinking? Right. But I'm not, so. I'm not them. I'm me. Thank God I'm just me. <laughs> and I'm a lot for me. <laughs> I am like, I'm a lot for me. And I'm like, oh, some days I'm like, oh, Heidi, (laughs) but thank God I can laugh at myself. You know, I'm just like, okay, I'm me. And I love who I am. I love myself for Mm -hmm. creating this, this person, you know, really, I just, I'm like, thank God I'm me. Cause I wouldn't want to be anyone else. Cause I don't know what I could do to of that. (laughs) And this, to your point, like the humor and the levity, even when it's serious topics. Yes. It's just, it's good medicine. It is good medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I posted a meme a little earlier today, and it's like a little kid, little boy walking on a path with this huge, dark shadow, right? And it's like... Me and my shadow trying to figure out how we're going to react to some bullshit. (laughs) And I just was so tickled because it's like shadow work, for example, can be really deep. Yeah. I'm going to say emotionally strenuous. Yeah. And so just to be like, oh, man, I kind of want playfulness in some of these things. Like just the reminder, like, yes, serious topics deserve our respect. And... Laughter is so healing. It's so disarming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's that vulnerability when we laugh, you know? We're showing we're showing the other side of the seriousness. It's like, well, mm-hmm. this is not a life or death. I mean, get the injection or not get the injection. That's your tr- you know, it's Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So I've been wanting to check in with you about, um, and I hope it's okay to ask here, but um, you had shared something with me a couple of weeks ago and when off the podcast, we just did a check-in and you shared something with me and we haven't talked about it since, wait, no, we haven't talked about it since. I have no um, idea what you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> You can't read my mind. Um, it was it was about something that um, your honey had expressed to you, and you felt kind of taken back by it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so no, I was I... just curious where things are with you with that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your care. That's what I feel from that, and I don't mind you know the transparency here. Um, keeping it to my side of the street, obviously. Um, yeah, I think there's been a really healthy conversation that while while it was maybe not the most skillful delivery, let's say, it, it began a healthy conversation around like what's really going on here. And I can own my part, you know, my role, I think, as an only child of like taking the whole stage having all the space, having all my preferences and needs met, right? And not having to think about anyone else is has been online in relationships. So from that lens, you know, I will say I have attracted partners who didn't take up much space. I mean, that's, that's what I can own, uh-huh. right? Of like people who like seemingly didn't have needs didn't take up space. So I'm like, cool, all mine, right? And that that's not really something you can replicate in a healthy relationship, frankly. So I feel a great deal of respect and admiration for Honey, for coming to the place of like, hey, there's no space for me here. I need space. I need, I have needs, right? And I think that's also his journey, Uh 
his awakening. Um, and yeah, it's led to some really fruitful, healthy conversations about, okay, this, this power dynamic doesn't work. And what, what can be different? What do I need to learn? You know, I am learning to lean back <laughs> in all my relations. This has, you know, this is one place in my life. This is true. Uh -huh. Right. But like at a silent retreat, I'm the first one at the door waiting to be let in to sit in the front row in front of the teacher. Uh -huh. You know, I'm the first one to raise my hand. I'm the first one to speak in a group Zoom. So there's a a collective sort of energy around like, oh, let me just lean back everywhere. Let me practice leaving space. Uh -huh for others uh -huh. um, because frankly, it's just not a muscle I've developed, <laughs> had to develop, right? Yeah. I didn't have to share with six other siblings. Like my yeah. parents were like, what do you want to do this weekend? I want Chinese. I want to go to the Chinese place and I want to go to the Metallica show. Okay. Wow. Right. And so I've kind of run with that, having yeah. strong preferences and knowing what I'm enthusiastic about and, and then honestly had partners who were like, oh, where do you want to go for dinner? Oh, I want to go to that Indian place, you know, on East 6th. And maybe we can go dancing at that jazz club. And they're like, okay. But they were never like, yeah, I really want Indian tonight. Oh. I'm really feeling, you know, Venezuelan food, whatever. Uh -huh. Making this part up. But yeah, yeah. And, and I'm being blessed with a partner who's like, hey, wait a minute. What about me? Uh -huh. And it's like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm down for that. Yeah. And respect for the backbone that takes. Uh -huh. It does. It takes a lot of courage. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Probably anxiety provoking. Like here I'm going to shift a chronic role that I've played. And ask for something that feels more mutual, reciprocal, fair. And I've played this role willingly for X amount of years. So now here I am disrupting yeah. the pattern. And disrupting the pattern in, I would say, in relationship coaching, the ask is still for us. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. The ask isn't, hey, I need this. It's like, for us to work, this is the shift. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you for asking. I feel like in a very healthy mindset about that, just yeah. watching us um, with our coach mm -hmm. really get to, like, what does this look mm -hmm. like if it's changing? What do I need to learn? Where does he need to learn? And it's collaborative co-creative it's not an ultimatum and a demand and a tug of war it's a okay hear you but yeah. now now what so it's i i wish it for everyone that when things come up it's like the team looks at it together like you as a team go hmm let's look at the problem versus you're the problem yes do you know what i mean like, like I do get know together and like check this out and, and figure it out together. Yeah. It's very security enhancing. It's very it safety creating. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Thank you for, uh, for opening up and sharing that because, um, you know, I, I so appreciate your, approach to things and and his approach to things even though they're different yeah you know they're different and I just think in relationships because relationships are hard regardless of what capacity the relationship is in what 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 situations it's in and um and because of that we're always taking risks Oof, we're it's, always it's, right? We're always taking risks and 
hopefully making the choice to be vulnerable, to be honest, to share, even when it's really hard and scary. Um, and yeah, and so I just, you know, for myself, I hope that I can experience that someday. I hope to. Yeah. Um, and because I know that, I know I'm really clear about what I don't want. <laughs> That's a good start, yeah. <laughs> it's a good start, yeah. Um, and I'm getting better about knowing what I do want. Like I have, I would say my list of what I do want is certainly longer than my list of what I don't want. Um, and most of the things are about the qualities of a person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then getting clear, because it really sounds like you're clear about what it is you want and what you need and what you're hoping to create together. Mm -hmm. That is so key. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yes. Yeah. Because otherwise it's one-sided and that, as we know, just, it sets a setup for failure. Yeah. And, and I'm going to hold, you know, when you're a kid, it can be one-sided, right? Like. Yeah. The, the big people trickle down things to the little people, hopefully. Um, and it's not mutual, right? It's, there is a, a real dependence in that yeah. way. And for me, there's some growing to do because that's what I'm used to. And I've never really had anyone. I've had partners leave versus stand for uh -huh. a better version of us. Yep. Me too. So, you know, let's say you have, Part, like I had partners who were really passive, didn't ask for their needs, didn't take up space, and then got resentful enough and left. Uh -huh. Didn't give me a chance to do anything, uh -huh. to course correct, or grow, or up level. Uh -huh. And this is different. Like, you know, having someone who's like, I'm here, I'm committed, and <laughs> here's the ask. Uh -huh. It gives me the gift of, okay. I get to I get to learn how to do this better because as much as I can pride myself in being a relationship coach I'm still learning I'm in the trenches you know and I think that's the blessing yeah. permission to be messy yeah right like this is the thing I'm studying and you know what I don't get it right all the time yeah yeah, yeah. so thank you yeah, you're welcome. And I, I want that that's... kind of transparency and, and collaboration for everybody. Yeah, me too. It doesn't have to be intimate, you know, partnerships. No. Just yeah, all relationships feeling safe and, and co-creative. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I just imagine the world with that kind of umbrella like overall energy I mean oh my god wouldn't that just be lovely you know yeah absolutely mm. Mm. yeah yeah thank you again it's very sweet of you to follow up on something from weeks ago that feels I feel touched oh you're welcome you're welcome yeah, yeah. and what's um, something like I feel like you know our weekly connections give me some insight into your world, but is there something you would like to be seen in or something that you're chewing on, thinking about? Oh. It's interesting that you asked me that because um, I have, so, this is February 18th. Oh my God. Okay. So where are we, where are we in the month? Right. Oh my gosh. So on the third, which was my dad's birthday, we did a celebration honoring my father. Right. So I did a lot of the sharing and whatnot. And, um, and I was just like, I, I was thinking about like, what, what do I really know about you? Cause I've shared a lot about my own life and my childhood and my relationship with my parents and all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, do I really know what I want to know? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
about you. And I was like, I, I mean, there's always like, there's always something right. You know? And so you shared, you shared with me, you know, about a little bit about your relationship with your mom, a little bit about your relationship with your dad. Mm -hmm. And so in my assessment, so if I were to say, if I were to make an assumption about something, it sounds to me as if you are closer to your dad than you are to your mom. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that that's true. Hmm, it's a really good question. Yeah, I don't know that I have an answer there. I think my father and I have a lot in common as it relates to being musicians, being artists, uh, songwriting, poetry. You know, it's like the, the best buddy you can actually hang and like wax esoteric with in that okay. regard. My mom doesn't really have that particular interest. So that's like, that's a place where her and I might do more like kayaking together, watch a movie together, or, oh. um, you know, she's definitely like that soft place to land mm -hmm. when I'm struggling. Like I still want my mama on uh -huh. a bad day. Um, where my father, I think of as like, because we share that understanding of being singers, being musicians, those conversations can feel really collaborative. Yeah. And I think it keeps changing. You know, I think as a kid, I felt more like my mom was my bestie mm -hmm. to some degree. And also there's like a, you know, the kids, kids and adults energy. So like, there's still like a bit of a separation there. Yeah. I think there's a closeness with each of them, but it feels distinctly different uh -huh. where it's coming from. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's the like, you birthed me, you've seen me through every heartache, you know, you've held me through every fever. Yeah. That's my mom. Yeah. You, you make my favorite meals, uh -huh. right? And you're always there to encourage. And with my father, it's like, oh, like even at Christmas, I got him a green screen with like the lights. So it was like he got into his, you know, Andrea Bocelli, like blue velvet oh. jacket, with the white pants and, you know, that whole look and got in front of the green screen. And I'm videotaping him to one of his songs that he's lip syncing to. And <laughs> then we're putting it in iMovie and creating this whole music oh. video. So like he and I get the bonding like that yeah yeah mm -hmm. and with my mom it's more like oh you have a tummy ache let me make you some ginger tea mm. and they're they're just like they're closenesses of very different flavors yeah i'm i'm hearing that yeah i'm hearing that that's fascinating yeah huh okay yeah and i think Sweet. my mom for all of her like mama bearness she's got a strength that's like she could be worried about you but she'll like keep it together uh -huh. you know and like maybe later say she was worried about you but in the midst of things she'll be like you got this you go for it where uh, my dad will be where my dad will be like you never know if you don't try but you can also get a sense that he's that his concern is more online mm -hmm. of like wanting to protect yeah. in a way it's hard to explain, but it's a feeling tone I get. Yeah. You know, where my mom's always, I want to say, prided herself in being the steady lighthouse for me. Right? She's yeah. a Gemini, so she's like, go, go, go with oh. like all the energy. Okay. And then she got this highly sensitive kid, you know, who's, yeah. who can put a song on repeat and cry. Yeah for days <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? so she was like okay like this is what right. I, this is the clay i'm working with right yeah 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 where my yeah. father i consider also maybe not highly sensitive but quite sensitive mm -hmm. as an artist mm -hmm. so he could he had my number in that way mm -hmm. yeah yeah where she had it intuitively 
Uh, She'd be like, mm, something's up. Let me check in on her. Okay. You know, or my yeah. dad's like, oh, I'd be sensitive about that same thing. So, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh. I'd like to be closer to them. And I don't mean that just, I think like I, physically there's a part of me, like I don't want to move to California, but I do want to pull California forward to New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like the making of memories, that kind of closeness. Mm -hmm. I value that. Having gone home for Christmas, I was like, man, memories appreciate. They really do experiences like with loved ones appreciate like with time and going back to them they always give more yeah, yeah. so in that way i want to be closer to them yeah hmm. so sweet oh. thank you for asking oh yeah. you're welcome so sweet to share that and to really kind of be sharing it while thinking through it a little mm -hmm feeling into it with you present. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know? Sometimes I feel like there's the good girl in me wants to pro produce an answer. Yeah. And when I feel really safe, like I do with you, it's like, oh, wait, let me actually take a minute to feel into that instead of just giving a surface answer for the, the sake of efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I can, I can understand. I can appreciate that. Yeah. Because I was so touched when you shared about kind of having your folks all to yourself when they came to visit you. Uh -huh. That was, you know what I mean? And just sort of the, <coughs> excuse me, the dynamic that you you three ha got to have. Yeah. I was really touched knowing that about you and how much that yeah. experience meant to you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it is very different having to share parents sure. versus not having to share parents to having them all to yourself all the time as a young person, you know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. being, you know, this is the place that can be both the, the gift and the shadow and being like the center of the universe. In that right, way. right. <laughs> Yeah, because I, think I know, you know. <laughs> yeah, because in my world, I think one of the reasons I think I shared last time that I really don't like attention. Did I share that? Mm -hmm. Have I said A that a little bit? Um, because in my world, the person who was getting attention, it wasn't necessarily good attention. Mm -hmm. It could mean that we were in trouble or we were going through something and because I'm very private, if I was going through something really personal, I didn't necessarily want to share it with my family, but my mother was, is one of those people who is just like, well, let's just put it out there. And I'm like, no, like, <laughs> we're not just going to put it out there. This is not for the public. This is my private life, but she just has no. I think I've said this before, like her boundaries are really almost non-existent at times. Wow. And so that was really, that was, it was painful and it was really challenging. And so, um, so to be the one who's getting attention for me never felt safe. Hmm. It never felt safe. Yeah. 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 Cause it doesn't sound like it was for anything positive no right yeah yeah and I'm willing to bet that's made you a pretty solidly boundaried person now more so now than ever before yeah. um especially with certain people mm -hmm. you know my mother being one of them yeah for sure yeah yeah I that's you know it's a huge um I'm going to say in like attachment theory, depth psychology in that world, like people who don't hold their, have very porous boundaries themselves tend to trample on other people's boundaries. Yep. Right. And so when we become boundaried with someone like that, we're sort of training them on how to, how to be with us. Right. Right. In a, in a 
in terms of etiquette, <laughs> social standards or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's really true. Yeah. yeah. And I know that she doesn't like it sometimes because she's uncomfortable because it makes her really uncomfortable. And then she's, you know, her sort of paranoia is what, it, what is being kept from me? What am I not being told? That kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, you're never going to find out. That's my choice to not tell you, you know? Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's just, it's, it has, I, it has saved me from so much grief and mm. um, pain mm -hmm. to just keep it to myself and to not share. Um, yeah. I've had to learn it the hard way. It's taken a long time, but it's taken, but it's, I feel I'm pretty rooted in it anymore. You know, I'm pretty solid in it. In being boundaried. And being boundaried, especially with my mother. And, and I'm getting a lot better. I mean, and I would say, especially with clients too, mm -hmm. you know, um, with clients, it's really important because there's some people you throw them a line and they're just like, you know, <laughs> reeling it in and I'm like whoa Nelly hold on let's talk about this you know right. um but that's just some people like and and I'm also pretty clear about who my boundaried clients are and who are not boundaried yeah. because I it, let me just say that it's it's pretty obvious to me you know <laughs> it just is not I'm subtle sure have, <laughs> no, exactly exactly yeah 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 and I, I just want to hold like being boundaried you know I think some people feel like it's a either selfish or rude or, or some other thing like that and it's like my healthy mm -hmm. boundaries and they're generally healthy caring boundaries yes so they're done with with a great deal of love I mean I get to be loving and warm and gentle and present with people yeah that's what they're built for they're built yeah. to be a win for us that's right I, well a win for every every mm -hmm. everyone in the relationship mm -hmm. really yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and when i was less boundaried you know i was i was personally miserable right frustrated aggravated pent up with stuff yeah and i wasn't all that pleasant with those people so it wasn't really in service to them Right. For me to have squishy boundaries. Right. There. I tried it. Yeah, yeah I have I too. She's a nice, good girl. And, you know, like stuff came out sideways, <laughs> frankly. Right. And that's where resentment mm -hmm. comes up for sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, this lets me get to be the best of me while loving you. Yeah. That's, that's the boundary. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Nice. So mm. sweet to be with you. Oh, always lovely to be with you. <sighs> I felt like I had a long day and I feel like replenished, recharged. Mm. Yeah. Sweet. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. So much love. So much love. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs>